internet this is Mike with Mike Jones knife and tool and today I'm going to show you how to restore an old draw knife so this is what I'm starting with um, both of the handles are wrapped in all this um, hockey tape or something which is likely because uh, they started to crack as they usually do um, but I was able to file off the peen that holds these little rubber discs on the bottom and they just pop off Unfortunately, this handle didn't have one, so uh, I'm not sure I may have to try to make another one of those for the other side. Then the handles just slide off, and they've got this metal cap on the front, just squared out. And this one's also broken in half. So I'm going to try to build new handles on my lathe, uh, and then clean this guy up. This thing, one of these guys is pretty bent, so I'll try to straighten that up. And the rest of it's covered in uh, a lot of rust and probably years and years of sap. So I'm going to clean that up with one of these uh, plastic sponge discs for an angle grinder. These things work really great for uh, removing dirt and rust and paint. Um, they're far less aggressive than say a flap disc or certainly like a grinding disc. And they don't actually remove metal, not nearly as much as one of those guys does. They just take the top off. And, uh, and they break down a whole lot faster themselves than a flap disc. So they're a little gentler on the actual metal. They don't heat it up as much, so you don't have to worry about ruining a temper. So the first thing I'll do is clean this up. To remove the guard off your grinder, there'll be little little marks, little arrows on the inside of the guard there. So you just have to rotate it. Until those arrows line up, it'll slide off of there for you. I like to use the guard most of the time, but these uh, sponge discs, just a little too big. that sanding revealed a little bit of a maker's mark Warnock and Company Galt and uh, number 8 stamped into it have to look that up that's got most of the important parts cleaned up uh, now I'll try to straighten the situation Snap, don't snap, don't snap, don't snap, don't snap. Pretty close. To turn the new handles, uh, I've got a couple little blocks of hickory that I'm going to use. Um, should last me way the rest of my life. And I've measured them down off of the old handles, and I'll cut them off and we'll put them on the lathe. Here's another tool I need to restore soon. Um, little crosscut saw. 
It's made in Canada, but it's got a really nice aggressive tooth to it. It's just covered in a lot of gunk, really, it's the only thing. Maybe I'll try to sharpen it too. If you ever work on my square stock and you need to find the center, just draw an X across it. And that's a real easy way to give you center. So a disclaimer to this section of the video, I am really novice at wood turning. Uh, I got this old lathe uh, really cheap off of uh, someone's second or third hand or something and um, it's not great and it came with this really terrible set of chisels that uh, that don't work very well so bear with me I just uh, I gotta get them close to where I need them I'll take the bulk of the material off here and then um, and then we'll see what I can do with some hand tools if it doesn't work very well so the reason I marked uh, the center is because that's where your little chuck has to go so you, you place that on the center and then tap it in and then this guy goes in here and this one comes up the back and I've marked center on this side as well so we'll get that close I'll lock this guy down crank her tight I think lock everybody out should be good to go. Stand back. So I think I want to get my tool rest pretty close, but obviously not too close that it'll be uh, hitting my work. And I'm told the the round gouges are uh, are good for like roughing the material off. If you got something square like this, you want to make round. Uh, it's good for just taking those big chunks out. I'm sure a better tool than this would do a much better job. Uh, here we go. Might mess around with the speed a little too, depending on how it's cutting. So that's going all right so far, actually, surprisingly. Um, maybe it's just that it's the hickory or it's a nice short piece or something, but um, it's cutting really nice. And uh, I'm gonna go get some safety glasses because it strikes me that that's probably a good idea. Don't go away. got one of the old handles here that I brought in just to use as a reference. I brought the little metal cap because that's eventually going to need to fit on there so I got to get it at least close. But this will give me a really good idea of, um, of what the shape was like. It was made like this in this shape for a reason. Um, I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel here uh, but I am going to you know kind of make it comfortable for my own hand because I can. Yeah I'll keep going with this. It's working really well. Luckily, I only have to do it twice.
like my fourth time on a lathe, so I'm going to call that a win. So I uh, bucked these guys down to length. The little metal caps are fitting really well on there. Um, before I round off the bottoms, I'm going to leave them flat for right now because I need to drill holes through these things so the rasp can fit down inside of there, or so the draw knife can fit right down inside. Um, I have to go all the way through and come out the bottom in the center. So what I might do is drill from both ends and hope to meet in the middle. That way, if I'm if I'm drilling and I'm, and I'm off a little, I don't end up way off on one end. I could be off a little here, off a little on the bottom, and, uh, and they'll kind of correct in the middle. So I've got a drill press, but um, I think I like my chances better um, eyeballing all the way around it uh, and, and keeping it chopped up in a vise with just the hand drill. I got a lot more maneuverability with it that way. Luckily, I've already got center marked on the back side of this from the lathe. So after a little bit of wiggling around, there's daylight through the hole. Now I'll make it a little bit bigger. I want to keep it a little undersized so that this will jam on there pretty good. And, um, and because it's a square, it'll keep it from rotating. We'll go a little bigger than that, slowly up in increments until uh, we get where we want to be. Perfect. All right, so I got uh, both of these guys drilled all the way through. Uh, I drilled out the tops of them just a little bit bigger because the, the knife has quite a taper up here. It's going to have these metal guys on there, the caps, which will help keep uh, the wood from splitting out from the, the steel pressing on it so much. But uh, I just wanted to give it a little extra. It's still gonna have plenty to hold it nice and tight, keep it from rotating. Uh, the next thing to do is try to make another one of these end caps. Uh, I've got this thin, thin piece of steel. It's uh, like an old diamond saw. And uh, I've traced this guy out onto the back. And before I cut it out, I drilled a hole in there so I have something to hold on to. Now I'm going to cut that out and then uh, figure out how to give it this concave shape. Not sure how that's going to work yet. So I don't know if this is going to work, but this is my idea to uh, round this guy out a little bit. I've got a ball peen hammer, uh, lightly chalked up in my vise. It's actually sitting down on solid solid steel. The soft jaw is just kind of holding it. And I'm going to put it on the round of the ball peen and then take a block of wood on top of that and then hit the whole thing with a much bigger hammer. My idea is that the wood is going to depress because it's soft around the uh, the ball peen and hopefully take the steel with it. I'm not sure it might just make a circle in the wood and not actually bend this guy at all but uh, I'm gonna try this out and see. My other idea was to place the wood flat down put this guy on it put the round on top of that and then hit that hammer with the bigger hammer but I don't really want to hit a hammer with a hammer metal on metal never feels very good to me so here we go <clears throat> it's actually kind of working 
I imagine this was probably done with a press. But it's kind of working. Not sure really how far I need to go. It's it's basically dictated by how much of a round I'm gonna put on the bottom of one of these, so I can kind of just make that up myself. It's just a, it's just a nicer detail in the bottom of the uh, the handle. So if you watch my videos uh, for any length of time, you'll know that I'm always excited about an opportunity to use a rasp. Okay, so these guys are now shaped, and uh, I'm just gonna just giving them a little buff with the sandpaper. They're really gonna smooth out with use over time. So a little bit of sandpaper right now won't hurt. And then now I think it's a good time to hit them with a little bit of a boiled linseed oil before they get caps on them and everything. I want the oil to penetrate the whole thing, including down inside. So I'm gonna pour it directly in into the palm of my hand and that'll give me lots to rub over the whole thing. So because this stuff is kind of toxic, uh, I always like to go safety first. Try to get it right down that hole, which won't happen, but it's good to try it out. And you spill lots on your floor. My floor is in, uh, this area of my floor is in really good shape, by the way. I'll let that sit for a few minutes and then uh, wipe off the excess. And now it's time for assembly. This is the fun part. All right, so first of all, we don't want to forget the little cap that goes on the top here. <coughs> then slide the whole deal down and it gets tight right where we want it to. I'm gonna place that onto a little block of wood here. There we go. just to support the bottom. And I've got another piece of nice soft uh, plywood. Put that on top. Because the plywood is softer than the hickory, uh, especially on the end grain, this will damage before this guy does. You always wanna have something sacrificial anytime you're hammering things together. And then I'm gonna gently tap this down um, until I get a good protrusion of the end of the uh, the end of the draw knife sticking up through there. I need to have enough sticking through where the little cap will fit over and still have a little bit left to peen over and seal it all together. So let's see how this works. <clears throat> the end's just popping out of there. And that'll depress into the, the plywood. No problem. So I always rest it on something nice and solid like an anvil or the back of your vise or something. And then a little protrusion, you want to hit it with a ball peen of the ball peen hammer to peen over the end of your steel. And so you just hold it nice and steady, brace this against myself here, and just gently tap. All kind of around the edges of this uh, of the pin that's coming up out of the cap here and once in a while just make sure this guy's nice and tight down and it takes some time but eventually this is nice and tight eventually you end up with this nice and rounded over smooth clean and that's a mechanical fix that's now mushroomed out of the hole 
wider than the hole, so now that can't come, pop, come out. As you're pulling on this thing, and working it, and working it, working it, you're not gonna pull that handle off, because now that's a mechanical bond there. Okay, let's do the other side. Well, that side took considerably more work, because uh, the very end of it, like this one was still peened on there, and it was a nice square hole, and the, uh, the cap fit on there nice and tight, so it didn't take much peening. This one, on the other hand, had uh, rusted or sheared off or something, and that's why the cap was gone. And the end of it was left was uh, really tiny, like a point. And uh, <laughs> next one I do, I'll take that into consideration and leave the hole in my cap uh, a whole lot smaller than this one. I ended up having to pound this handle on <clears throat> a little bit farther than the other one. And I, I ended up with a little bit of bend over there, which kind of sucks, but um, might be able to deal with it. But uh, just to get the thing down far enough to have enough material sticking out that I could mushroom the whole thing down and, and fill the hole. But we ended up there pretty good. It's tight now, it's not coming off. This sucker is definitely tight on the shank of that thing, but it uh, feels nice. It feels really good. Uh, it's comfortable. I can get right up over, up over the ends. You get a lot of nice leverage pulling on these guys um, or traditionally down here feels comfortable uh, because my hands are filthy it already makes the handles look like they've been worked for a few years so that's good now we're on to uh, cleaning up the edge of this thing and it's actually not too bad as it is it's uh, it's just gonna need a bit of a sharpen there was a pretty decent edge hiding underneath all the crap on there so So as with any tool that with a chisel grind that is one side's flat and it's only got a single bevel on this side, uh, you want to touch up the back edge first, the flat edge. Just make sure whatever you're using, like a stone or something, stays nice and flat. You don't want to put any kind of bevel on this side at all, just keep it nice and flat. make sure you find your find your edge there your bevel <clears throat> and like I say this one's just gonna it's just kind of getting a light touch up it's actually fairly sharp already this is a strop it's um, just a strip of leather. Sometimes it's on a piece of wood like this. Sometimes it's just, just loose and you can whip your knife over it. And this is honing compound. It's just a, just a stick of very fine abrasive. Rub a bunch on your leather strop. And then the same as with the sharpening, do the backside first. And you go uh, not into the blade as you would with uh, a stone, you come away from it, kind of go with the blade. And what this does primarily is uh, as you're sharpening with a stone pushing into the blade, you go back and forth and back and forth generally on a, on a blade and you're always kind of pushing this little, little microscopic wire back and forth that doesn't quite give you um, the sharpest edge you can have. The leather, because it's soft, will actually kind of slightly bend over the edge a little bit. And the more you rub on it, the more it takes away that little wire all along the edge. And the honing compound also helps to give uh, your edge a really nice polish. So I go back and forth a couple of times with this. Um, these work great on any edge tool, especially knives and uh, axes. You want to put a really nice polished edge on your axe, which I do. A couple of times back and forth.
I'm gonna work the whole edge evenly. And your result. You should focus on you. A nice fine edge. This edge was in surprisingly good shape, no nicks in it. Sharp now. This is um, it's just a chunk of two by four, but it's kind of what I've been, I've been testing. I sharpened up a couple of little um, block planes and uh, a spoke shave the other day, so this is just kind of what I'm testing on. That's what you're looking for right there. These fine curls. Works good, awesome. So I'll build a super simple little sheath for it just to protect the edge while it's in, uh, in my toolbox with all of my other timber framing kind of tools and otherwise that's it.